Hi, my name is Pastor Al York, and welcome to Truth in the Trenches. Today we're going to be in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 3. Do not let kindness and truth leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. What a simple yet very profound admonition we have in this verse. Two things that we should never let go of. Two things we should never get a, let get away from us. Kindness and truth. Well, just think for a few minutes what our lives would be like, what our world would be like without these two things. Kindness and truth. Would it be wrong to suggest that these two realities are the building blocks of society? a marriage, a home, a church. For example, in the case of a troubled marriage, it's usually because one or both spouses are facing challenges regarding one or both of these things, being kind and truth. First Corinthians 13 states that love is kind. And I think these verses that follow in that chapter are a detailed description of what kindness and love look like. Let me read it just to remind you what it says. Love is patient, love is kind, and is not jealous. Love does not brag and is not arrogant. It does not act unbecomingly, it does not seek its own, is not provoked, it does not take into account a wrong suffered. It does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, it believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. And I think the reason patience is listed before kindness is because kindness needs time to act. Patience, being slow to anger, gives the opportunity to show kindness. You probably know as I do, when we get, when we get busy or when we get, have a lot to do, when we have a lot on our plate, and something interrupts us or something unexpected happens or somebody does something unexpected or interrupts us or whatever, it's very hard to be kind because we don't have time to be to think. We don't have time to stop. We're impatient. And impatient, quick-tempered people are seldom referred to as being kind because they don't have time. There's no time to be kind. No time to think about do unto others as you've had them do unto you. No time to think before you respond. It's just boom. There it is. When they're reviled, they're very quick to revile and return. That's why love is patient, and that's why patient perceives kindness. You see how many of these things in 1 Corinthians 13 deal with our reactions? How love and kindness respond? How, how kindness, in kindness we relate to people? How we treat people? How I talk to people? How I react to people? Love isn't jealous. Kindness is not jealous. It doesn't brag. It doesn't provoke. It's not easily provoked. It does not take into account the wrong suffered does not rejoice in unrighteousness, bears all things, endures all things. These are reactions to the different things life throws at us in our relationships, the people in our lives, being kindness in the smallest of things, being kind when you're right, especially when we are right. Right, Being right does not give us the right to be unkind in our reactions, unkind to people. Sometimes we're better losers than we are winners. And sometimes it's easier to be kind when we've lost than it are when we're right. And we need to ask ourselves, what am I like when I'm right or found out to be right? Do I get angry? Do I get proud? Do I get whatever? Do I think that gives me the right to treat people unkindly because I was right and they were wrong? Of course it doesn't. Kindness is not easily provoked. It does not speak without thinking. That's what we need to have in our hearts. That's what we, why we need to have new hearts. That's what the gospel provides through the faith in Jesus Christ. He gives us a new heart. The Spirit comes to live in us and to control our spirit control life as a walk in love, as a walk in patience, kindness, and gentleness, and long suffering. So do not let kindness leave you. Do not use, lose your grip on kindness. Do you understand the importance of kindness? that your children understand the importance of kindness in their relationships, our grandkids as well. Kindness in how they treat other people, even maybe treat people that aren't that nice to them. And we could begin by how they treat their siblings at home. 
It's a great place to start teaching about kindness and what it looks like. It's a great place to model it as a husband and wife, what, what it is to be kind to one another in a relationship. To bind it around your neck means kindness is visible for all to see. A necklace makes you look good. Kindness decorates your life. It makes it attractive. Think about people you've met in your life that were unkind. Were you drawn to them? Probably not. Think about people who've done things that are kind for you. How does it make you feel about them? It draws you into their life, doesn't it? Our verse says truth as well as kindness we're not to let, let go of. They should go hand in hand. But sadly, it isn't always the case. There are some who know truth, know the Word of God, but that knowledge has made them proud and arrogant and unloving and unjudgmental and really not people you enjoy being around because they're harsh and judgmental in their attitudes towards others. Truth should humble us. Truth should be engraved in our hearts. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. We speak in the truth in love. We're guided by the truth, and the truth being God's Word. Jesus bore these truths perfectly in his life. It's a perfect blend of truth and kindness in the life of Jesus. What drew people to Jesus was not his sermons primarily. It was his kindness towards them. He was unlike anybody else they'd ever heard. His life was unlike any other life they'd ever seen. It was marked, yes, by truth, but by kindness. The truth can also mean the absence of falsehood, deception, and lies. That we're not living a, 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 two, a two-faced life. That we're not living a lie. We're, not, we're walking in the truth. And when you're not walking in the truth, when you're living a lie, when you're two-faced or your life is filled with deception, it makes you very self-centered, very self-conscious. You don't think about others. You just, you just have to pre- spend all your energy covering or hiding or pretending. And when you are kind to people, that's a way of inviting them in close. And you don't want people close when you're living a lie. And so we're, we're paranoid. People get paranoid when they're living a lie. And they get angry, and they're unkind, they push people away. So truth can mean the Word of God, or it can mean living a life of, of integrity. And neither one of those we should ever let, let go of in our life. Believe the truth, live the truth, and engrave it on your hearts, that your motives are pure. We desire others to know the truth of the gospel. Our sins have been forgiven through the cross of Jesus Christ, and we proclaim this truth, and we walk in this truth humbly with kindness and integrity. Remembering this great truth in Romans 2.4, Do you think lightly of the riches of his kindness and tolerance and patience, not knowing that the kindness of God leads you to repentance? The riches of the kindness of God, the tolerance and the patience of God, knowing that the kindness of God leads you to repentance. Do you remember that? Do you know that? I trust that you do. In our lives, if they're going to be lived and be perfect as our Father in heaven is perfect, they're going to model these qualities of a spirit-filled life, kindness, tolerance, patience. And that's what is going to make the gospel powerful as we proclaim it. So what are the ingredients of a love that is kind? Let me just give you six. Patience, thoughtfulness, gentleness, caring, respect, and selflessness. All these are demonstrated in our actions, in our words. They flow from our heart, a heart and a life controlled by the Spirit of God living in us. So do not let kindness and truth leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Kindness and truth. Don't leave home or go home without them. May this simple truth guide us and guard us in the trenches of life, which is seek to live our lives for the glory of God and the good of others. May God bless.